Welcome back to CTV Morning Live. Always great to have Dr. Paul joining us, CEO and Medical Officer of the Health uh, of Eastern Ontario. Uh, so great to have you on the show. Thank you. And I'm just going to lead in with we're hey, talking sure. brain development. Sure. And from there, I will let you go because it's past and future. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, very often people ask me about what can I do to get the best for my child's development, right? And uh, when you talk about development and pediatrics, what's pediatrics? Basically, we follow children uh, how, in terms of their growth and development. So we ask parents, um, at what age does your child sit and walk and talk and those type of things? And, those, and we sort of take it for granted that those things will occur naturally, and they do. And there's a timeline for those. Most of the brain's development really occurs in the first couple of years of life. So, for example, ability to see, ability to learn, ability to hear and, and interpret things and expressive language and so on. Those, all those uh, um, immense brain functions development occur within the really first 18 to 24 months of life. People don't understand that. And so, uh, just to give an example, um, a baby size, head size, will grow to 80%, right? 80% of adult size by one year of age. Wow. So, most of your brain growth is done in the first year of life. So there, there has to be so much significance placed on exactly. how that within that first year, what is, exactly. what is being done and nurtured for the brain. Eggs, and that's the whole point. The whole point is obviously if you take a medication or if you injure your head and fall, down, you know, fall on the ground, you will get brain injury and you will get some traumatic brain injury. But we also know now that what, what it takes to nurture or, or support this development is really being cared, tender loving care and stimulation. And, and, and that's why breastfeeding is great because breastfeeding gives you all those attributes. And so, but it doesn't have to be just breastfeeding, it's parents, caretakers, grandmothers, grandparents, whoever's taking care of the child, the more you stimulate the child, the more you caress the child, the more you care for the child, the better it is for that, child, that child's brain development. And very often, if these things don't, don't occur, for example, if a child's abused or is neglected, you will get what was called a misdevelopment of these things that can be manifested by not being able to go to school or not being ready for school. And we see that in certain areas of disadvantage, right? We know that. So what we're saying is, very simple, read to your kids, stimulate your kids, because you're not only investing in their immediate sort of uh, development, but also in their long-term development. Yeah, this isn't about just matching up at your play date, you no, know, but that they're no, doing the same things. This not. is really their, their, their future. That's and right. this was an interesting study that came out, because just recently this has really been brought to the forefront. This has been brought to the forefront in terms of what we call the brain development and the impact of normal brain development. And, we, you know, so obviously if a child is neglected or if a child is not uh, brought up properly, let's say, um, uh, you will obviously say, yeah, there's going to be mental effects and psychological effects. We know that, right, if a child doesn't bond properly. But it also goes a step beyond that. As a matter of fact, studies were shown. Um, if you look at rats and primates and, and monkeys, if they're not caressed, if they're not taken care of at a young age, there are brain changes that alter the way their hormones are secreted, which may actually lead to chronic disease. So if we want the best for our babies, not only in terms of development and, and their, to reach their full potential, let's take care of them, love them, cuddle them, uh, and stimulate them as much as possible. You're really investing in the child's long term. That's what we call life course perspective. Okay, so there are a <laughs> lot of parents that are sitting at home right now, me included, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I'm sitting there going, I'm well past that first 18, okay. 20 months. Sure. Did I hug them enough? Did I kiss them enough? Did I do all that, of that? So you start a, to question. Well, it's a very good question. It's not that, you, it's not to look back, it's to look forward and to continue doing that. It's never too late, obviously, but I think people should understand. And I don't believe that if, you know, uh, you, it's never, you can't go back. But the thing is that you want to stimulate it as much as possible. So for new parents out there, uh, that's good. And for parents ongoing, it's never too late to stimulate a child, even an adolescent or, or, or you, know, um, you know, a teenager needs that stimulation and that communication. It's different stages and different ages mm -hmm. was what they need. So it's not to make people feel bad. It's to make them aware that the more you stimulate a child, regardless of the age, uh, the better it will be for that child's outcome. Amazing. Really interesting uh, yeah. research for sure. Uh, thanks for joining us. No problem. For all the parents right now, because I know there's a ton of moms that are sitting there <laughs> breastfeeding or their babies keep, right now. Keep on keep, going. Keep at it. Uh, you, you guys are doing a great job. Always a pleasure. We do have to take a commercial break. We're approaching the 8 o'clock news headlines. Uh, look at traffic. It has been a much lighter uh, commute in for so many people with March break underway right now. Uh, raining outside. Jeff will have your weather. Annette will have your headlines. We're back after this.